market leader in the FMG sector, more than 44 brands in 14 different categories, a brand which 9 out of every 10 people in India use that is none other than Hindustan Unilever Limited. Hello guys, welcome back. So today we are going to do the basic fundamental analysis of the HUL stock. So let us begin our session by understanding the business of HUL. Hindustan Unilever Limited is one of the major company in the FMG sector of the country. FMGG stands for Fast Moving Consumable Goods. The brands of the company HUL is spread over 14 categories in, and it is having more than 44 brands. So in the food brands, the three rows this red, red label, Taza, Kisan, Quality Walls, Taj Mahal, Brew, Noor. In the personal care brands, the Lakme, the Ponds, Fair and Lovely, Peers, Clear, Lux, the Vaseline, Axe, Lifebuoy, Pepsor and Close Up. In the home care brands, the Comfort, the Wheel, the Rin, Domex, Wim, Surfixel. So as you can see, there is a well-established brand in India. And HUL company is having a very good brand visibility in the people's mind of the country. Forbes raised HUL as the most innovative company in India and 8th innovative company globally. It is having 85 years of heritage in India, which means that HUL is a well-established company in the country India with over 85 years of heritage or over 85 years of experience as a company in India. The market capital of HUL company is 5,47,203 crores whereas the current price or the current share price of the uh, HUL company is 2,328 rupees. So market capital can be easily found out by the formula current share price into number of shares that will give you the overall net worth or the overall market capital of the company. So as you can see on your screen, the largest company in the FMG sector is HUL. The peer groups of HUL company is uh, Nestle, P&G, Britannia, ITC. But ITC company's market capital is quite more than the uh, Hindustan Unilever Limited. But ITC uh, gets its major revenue from the tobacco business. So in the FMG sector, the one which leads all of them is Hindustan Unilever Limited. Now let us analyze the strengths of the HUL company. It is having a very good brand visibility. It is having more than 44 brands in 14 different diversified sectors. It is a market leader in the consumer goods, which means it is having a monopoly over the goods which it is producing. It is an innovative FMCG company. FMCG company, as I told earlier, stands for fast moving consumable goods. It innovates a lot of new products. For example, during this COVID-19 crisis also, it innovated a lot of new products. It may be the alcohol based sanitizers. It may be uh, the sprays, which you can spray on the objects before touching them. So these are the, uh, it is an innovative FMCG company. It is having an extensive and integrated distribution system uh, which is very very important for a company as to keep up the supply chain to meet the demands there is a need of extensive and integrated distribution system as the company is established over 85 years ago so this company is having a very good and uh, integrated distribution system in the country. Now let us analyze the share price of the HUL company. On 28th May 2016, the share price was 812 rupees. On 2nd June, it was 1086 rupees. 31st August, it was 1780 rupees. And in 17th April 2020, it was 2385 rupees. And again, the current price is 2328 rupees. There is a decline in the share price, but it is mainly due to the COVID-19 crisis and it once again boom up. So you, you can see there is a positive growth in the share price of the company HUL. Now let us financially analyze the company Hindustan Unilever Limited. So I'm having data from March 2010 till March 2021. I'll be mainly talking about the sales of the company, the expenses, the operating profit, the OPM percentage that stands for the operating margin percentage, other income, interest rate and depreciation. So let us start with the first sales of the company. In the year 2010, the company had a sales of 17,000 crores. 
in the year 2011 it had a sales of 19000 crores 2012 a sale of 22000 crores and now the present uh, sales is 45996 so it's a positive drastic growth in the number of sales the company is having so in the increase of the number of sales we can say that the company is expanding which is a positive sign for an investor now we'll see the expenses if the goods are produced more then the variable cost will increase so is the case with the expenses expenses are also increasing 15,000 crores, 17,000 crores, 18,000 crores, 23,000 crores and now the present expense is 34,672 crores now we'll see the operating profit of the company operating profit is nothing but the EBITDA EBITDA stands for earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization operating profit is 2344 in 2010 and now the present operating profit is 11324 we can easily find the operating profit by just simply subtracting the expenses from the net sales as you can see here on your screen the opm percentage that is nothing but the operating profit margin percentage is also increasing it has become 13 14 15 17 18 and it has become 25 percent so what does operating profit margin mean operating mar profit margin is nothing but the operating profit divided by the net sales into 100 so in this case in march 2010 the operating profit was 13 percent that of the sales whereas now it is 25 percent of the sales so a positive operating growth if the operating or uh, uh, let me take that operating profit margin if the opm percentage is increasing drastically then this company's efficiency is increasing Another one point we can derive from this is that the company is having monopoly over many products which means it, is, it can increase the price, it can decrease the price at its own wish. So this is a good sign for an investor. Let us see the other income. As you can see in March 2010 it was 66, uh, so more than 600 crores. In 2011 494 crores, 432, 1255. 1255 then again 860 1296 but now it is only 286 which means the company is focusing all its revenue towards its growth now let us see the interest one of the wonderful things about the HUL company is that it is debt free nearly debt free i am not completely saying it's debt free it is nearly debt free and uh, the debt which HUL has taken is really negligible uh, as you can see here 2010 it was just 7 crores then 2011 it was completely debt free which means 0 crores then 1 crore 25 crores then now it is just 180 108 crores which is negligible in front of the sales or the equity of the company as you can see on your screen the depreciation is 184 crores 221 crores 218 crores and now it is 1112 crores so a positive growth in the depreciation is a good sign for an investor it is because if the depreciation is more then the company is expanding and it is buying more before tax of that company it was 2820 in the year 2010 and now it has increased drastically the tax also uh, the company is also paying some tax and the net profit that is nothing but the part of that company was initially 2202 and now it is 7954 crores now let us see the earnings per share of that company Earn eps stands for earnings per share earnings per share can be easily found out by the formula pat or nothing but the profit after tax divided by number of shares so this company was giving an eps of 10 rupees in the year 2010 and now it is giving an eps of 33 rupees that is a really good sign for an investor a good eps growth is a good sign for an inv investor to invest in the company 
as you can see here the compounded sales growth is also increasing it was in three years the sales were getting compounded at the rate of 10 percent and in five years it was eight percent and 10 years it is nine percent that is really wonderful now let us see the compounded profit growth if the sales growth is increasing automatically the profit will also increase in three years 15 percent five years 14 percent 10 years 14 percent and in the trailings of 12 months that is in the future they are expected the company would make a component profit of 18 percent now let us see the stock price CAGR. CAGR stands for compound, compounded annualized growth rate and in, uh, in the one year the CAGR of the company was 18% that your stock value got compounded at the rate of 18% in 3 years, 16% in 5 years 23% in 10 years 23%. The return on equity in 3 years was 49% in 5 years 55% and in 10 years 65%. Now I will show you how much returns you would have earned if you had invested in one HUL share every month. So the current share price of HUL is 2,328 rupees and the current CAGR is 23%. So I am taking these two as constant and which can increase in the future also. So I want to invest for a period of 25 years and my expected return is 23%. So now I will calculate the returns and as you can see on your screen, the expected amount is 2 crores 39 lakhs 36,613 rupees. You just invested around 7 lakhs but you are earning more than 2 crores. So this is the power of compounding. I hope so. You enjoyed the session. Please like, share and subscribe our channel. Thank you. Thank you one and all.